So jacked up to talk to Eric Mangini, Fox Sports analyst, joining us now live on the show. So Patriots Raiders, you faced Belichick a few times. You, you, so Josh McDaniels gets to face, you know, his mentor. You think he's nervous? Did you like to do it? I, I love those games. I, I thought those were the best games to prepare for because you have such intimate knowledge of, of what they're doing. And, and then they understand what, what you're going to do. So we would do things like use code words that, that guys would have robot, robotic reactions to and, and instantly think that we were adjusting to something and, and make it something totally different. And and it was like that every single time where you you're you're adding layers to the game plan because you you know what hurts and and you also understand that they know what hurts you. I, I thought it was some of the best and most interesting coaching I got to do. So I finally spotted a little hole with Brock Purdy, and I, I don't think it's solvable. So the Niners' three best offensive players, McCaffrey, Debo, and Kittle, are all wildly physical and a bit injury prone because of the way they play their offense hits like most teams defenses do they're very physical so because Debo's out I mean McCaffrey had 26 carries last night sick and and yeah. and because Purdy's young they're going to give him a more restrained here we're going to give you two or three things to just do so I thought to myself this is a little bit of trouble there's no way at this point in his career I want McCaffrey with 30 touches in a football game. <laughs> I mean, I love him, but I but I did see Eric. I saw that and I thought that's a little hole right now. They're becoming very reliant on a guy that gets banged up pretty easily. Your thoughts? It's it's dangerous because you you know you have to support the young quarterback, but you know you're just waiting for the other shoe to drop in in terms of of injury and and how do you balance that out? Now, they, they've got a nice situation where they, they've won the division and, and, and don't have to worry about uh, necessarily moving up spots as much so they could, they could take some of that, that pressure off. But they've, they've got to continue to protect the young quarterback. I think there's, there's some other things that are going to be really interesting to see, Colin, is, is how well he responds to consistent pressure. Yeah. And, and, and look, he tried to throw an interception last night. <laughs> and when you look back at, at his college career, he, he, his touchdown to interception ratio wasn't that staggering. I mean, there were nine, eight, nine, ten interceptions per year. So he's, he's got that in him. Uh, but he's, look, he's done an amazing job, better than anybody could have ever expected. But pressuring him and playing really tight coverage if you can, is, is going to be interesting to see how he responds. So I think the most fascinating game, it may not be the best, it could get ugly, but it's Tua against Josh Allen. So I've never been, I've said this, and I got pushed back a month ago, and I said, I know Tua can win at home in 78-degree weather. Put him in the cold. Put him in Cincinnati. Put him in Cleveland. Put him in uh, uh, Baltimore. Put him in Buffalo, and it's raining or windy with that lack of arm strength. And, and, that's what I want my franchise quarterback to be. I can go on the road with Aaron Rodgers' arm, and he can win anywhere, or, or, or Burrow, or you, you know all the guys, Herbert. And so I've always wondered about bad weather Tua and heavy pressure Tua. Well, I've seen him with heavy pressure the last two weeks. It's been Tebow bad, and now comes pressure. <laughs> not just bad, Eric, but like three for 17 stuff. And I said it this week, and I'll get pushback. But if he is unraveled in this, that feels like to me that GM flies back and that coach and they start texting and, and, and it's a Brian Flores situation. What like guys, this, this isn't it. Am, am I hyperbolic on this? What do you think? No, I, I don't think so at all. The San Francisco game, you, you can understand because you're West coast, tough defense. Okay. That, that, that's a one off. When you go to the Chargers game, they're banged up. They're playing a, a ton of young guys, and he performs the way he does. But when you read the comments, did you read the comments after the game? There's a Chargers linebacker talking about the fact that they were just going to flood the middle of the field because that's where the highest percentage of his throws go. And when you look at his heat map, it, it's it's absolutely true. That That's where he's going with the ball. And, and that's what they were going to take away. They were going to see if he could beat them throwing to the outside. So Tua talks about it and said, we knew exactly what they were doing. And, and the fact that he couldn't overcome it, knowing what they were doing, the fact that people are going to jam up the middle of the field and force him to throw outside, now factor in the arm strength and the weather. If he's forced to throw outside, 
those are the toughest throws to, to make. That that there's there's a lot of things as as he continues to play where where the league identifies your weaknesses and and you have to prove that you can overcome them. And he hasn't or he you know in this string. Yeah. So uh J Mac lives and dies with the Jets. And we talked about this 20- I I know that. We've talked about it a million times. So, I said this is perfect. I used to give quarterbacks three years. Now it's Thanksgiving by the second year. You had a lot more snaps in high school. You had seven-on-seven camps. College throws like the NFL now. I'm not giving you three years. Thanksgiving year two, I got to see something. So here we are post-Thanksgiving year two, and it's perfect. He didn't know he was going to (laughs) start. It's a home game against an average defense. This is perfect. If he goes out, I don't want to hear about pressure late starts. I got to know if this kid has it in him. And this is perfect. He got benched. He got humbled. He hasn't gotten first team reps. I, and I've said it, if he comes out and it's a dog, I've made my decision. It, it, again, do I sound too harsh? No, not, not at all. It's now this is interesting too, because Detroit can put up a ton of points. Yes. That's one problem. And their defense, as long, even though it's an average defense, it's gotten a lot better over the last quarter plus of, of the season. They've made a, a ton of strides defensively. And if he goes out and, and it's a function of he's okay, he just didn't lose the game for us. That, that's not going to be good enough. He's got to show that he can help win games. And now you've got the Purdy effect. Purdy comes in and plays the way he does. And, and you you're sitting on Zach Wilson and, and, the, the equation changes to some degree. It changes yeah. for Trey Lance too. It changes for all these guys because you can't you can't make the excuse that he hasn't been given every single advantage you can be given as a quarterback. Yeah. Detroit is as much fun as you can have for kind of an average team. <laughs> I love – you know what? And I was a doubter on Dan Campbell, but the one thing is Bill Parcells, who I love, one of the smartest guys in football, loves him. So it's like, well, Parcells knows more than I do, and he loves him. I'll tell you, when I watch Detroit play, they don't look poorly coached to me. They play so hard. And to your point, they get better. This defense was a disaster in September. They got a pass rush now. And and Dan Campbell is authentic. He is who he is, and he's not trying to to hide from that. And and that resonates. And, And when he played, he was like you see as a coach. He was he was that tough. He was that demanding on himself. I'm sure he was that demanding on his teammates, and and that resonates as well. I'm I'm happy for him because he of what he's done and and because he stayed true to to who he is. I think that I think that's a the right approach. One hundred percent. Eric Mangini, Fox Sports, Saturday games, Sunday games, Monday games. <laughs> this, this is so good. I love the weather. It's so good right now. Uh, Coach, great great storylines. Oh, everywhere. Great seeing you, too. Everywhere. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.